Hey there guys, it's me the Dom Fanatic and welcome to week 6 of the Pokemon Premier League Division 1 Season 5. Now I've got that mouthful out of the way, uh, I'm happy to say this week we are playing against uh, the Southampton Sneedles, S Sneedles? Sneasels, managed by uh, Jordines, aka Jordan, as you can see in front of me. So, uh, you can quite clearly see the two teams that have watched the game right in front of you. Let me just quickly go over the draft that Jordan has got. Quite a small one, a uh, very, very scary one. Very different to the beginning of the season as well, he's already used all of his uh, transfers. Um, definitely some things on this draft that I was scared of. So we've got Manaphy, which is his Mega Z-Crystal user, so the user of Z-Crystal's offensively and support moves. So obviously instantly, Z-Rain Dance is uh, terrifying. Uh, we've got the Excadrill, the Sylveon, Whimsicott, Mega Sableye, Volcarona, Kyurem, which is his other Z-Move user, and Bronzong. Now, obviously in the PPL you're allowed three Z-Move users. Uh, Jordan actually dropped one, and I don't know what it was that was the Zemu user. I'm going to assume it was Bla assume it was Blaziken, um, but he's dropped that. Uh, yeah, it was Blaziken actually, and I think he's picked up Volcarona for it. So yeah, um, he's made a few changes to his team already. Um, so you can kind of tell that Jordan may not be too comfortable with his uh, draft. So it's definitely something I wanted to play on. Um, it's a couple of things. Um, looking at the team preview, pretty much the two things: Mega Sableye and uh, Volcarona. Two things that stop Mega Beedrill, uh, and a lot of my offense actually, Kartana as well, aren't present. And as soon as I didn't see them two, I immediately felt like I had a really, really good chance going into this game. I agree with what Jordan was saying to me uh, after the game. He, it was a game where he felt like he needed all eight, and he could have easily have left two of these behind and bought the other two things. Um, but obviously it's down to what you, you want to prepare for, and you know, Jordan's obviously picked this team. So, might as well go over my team very quickly. I'll leave the um, build in the description below, uh, so a copy of the text from Showdown. First up we've got Assault Vest uh, Electivire, which you can see I actually did lead with in this game. Um, basically it was a lovely, lovely, lovely offensive switch in, into Manaphy. Uh, chew any one of its hits, uh, even if it's offensive, and then I can scare it off with uh, either, you know, Thunderbolt, Thunder Punch, Wild Charge, Volt Switch. I'm actually mixed. I say mixed. I'm physically, I'm, I'm basically physically offensive with Volt Switch, uh, Hasty Nature, Max Attack, Max Speed. I was definitely considering Max HP, Max Attack, but I considered the fact that he has got that, um, the Kyrim, and I wanted to run the chance of me winning a speed tie against it rather than actually trying to out bulk it because it will still beat me if I'm out you know if I'm, if I'm max HP it'll still probably beat me one on one so I was like okay I probably need to bring offensive uh, speedy one because uh, it also outspeeds Mole if he's not scarfed so that's my reasoning behind that we have then got physically defensive uh, Tokus didn't really have anything that matched up against his physical offense too well Tokus was the best thing definitely running the Babiri Berry on it this week because it does then let me handle Excadrill a lot easier, obviously being immune to Earthquake and taking an Iron Head, Iron Head hitting him with Flamethrower, I am actually Dazzling Gleam, Flamethrower, Roost and Defog. Roost and Defog obviously staples on this Togekiss set, is a defensive one so I kind of needed it. Um, it's a serious four slot syndrome uh, sort of feeling for Togekiss this game, um, but that's the set I decided to bring. The Crosma is kind of forced to bring specially defensive, it, uh, it's able to, I say, deal with Manaphy and Kyurem pretty well, uh, Whimsicott if it decides to bring, you know, offensive one. Sylveon, um, maybe, Sylveon's always scary offensively because, you know, that Choice Specs Hyper Voice with Pixelate is incredibly powerful so something I'd be looking out for and again Gastrodon I didn't really want to bring because he has got that whimsy cot he can run hidden power grass on anything he could run energy ball um, obviously admittedly it, it matches up against the team quite well um, sort of you know offensively and against a lot of things it can do well but then he's also got things that can destroy it so I wasn't too comfortable bringing it so back to the offense we've got adamant mega beedrill with u-turn knock off poison jab and drill run because it pretty much hits his whole team super effectively, other than Manaphy, but again, Poison Jab does a lot. Uh, Choice Scarf Kartana, just in case he did bring the Z Rain Dance on the Manaphy. Again, uh, the combination of its moves uh, with Scarf let me outspeed pretty much his whole team, as long as he hasn't got Scarfed. Um, Whimsy Cop, and just kill things. And finally, we've got the Expert Belt in Fernape with Mac Punch, Close Combat, Thunder Punch, and Mac Punch. I can't if I said that already. So let's get into the game. I do decide to lead off with the Electivire. I am absolutely fine with him leading off with the Extra Drill, if that's what he wants to do. I can go straight into my Togekiss, or Necrozma, potentially, um, and try and scout out his set a bit. So I'm going to click Volt Switch. I have no worries about him bringing in the Extra Drill, because he did lead off a Bronzong. I'm fully expecting him to want to get rocks up, because 
I've obviously got Togekiss and Beedrill both weak to rock, so I'm going to predict the Stealth Rock play, go into my Togekiss, and I'm going to go into that to get the Defog off. So obviously I'm very wary this thing could go for a Steel move and pop my Babiri Berry, but if it means I can get a Defog off to help Beedrill, uh, just U-turn and Poison Jab his team, because that does literally just destroy his team, that's absolutely fine by me. But he does actually decide to click the Toxic, which is annoying, but I would much rather take that any day of the week over um, him clicking Gyro Ball or Heavy Slam, whichever the two he has, and ruining my Babiri Berry. So um, he knows that he's kind of in a losing battle here because he'll expect me to have the Flamethrower. Um, and so he does make the play into Manaphy, scouting that perfectly. Uh, flamethrower is definitely probably my best play at that point. Um, not messing around. But from the Flamethrower damage, I can see that this thing is definitely not special, uh, especially defensive. Um, max HP is pretty much you know, just confirmed by this point, so some kind of bulky set, I'm thinking, I'm just really, really, really scared of Calm Mind thing, which is why I'm a physical um, based uh, Electivire this week, obviously score could be an issue, but as you can see, I absolutely tank that Ice Beam and, uh, well, force him out because he can't stay in, and I decided that after him not really predicting the electric move first turn, uh, he's going to predict it this turn, and I do click the Earthquake, and because this extra drill has in fact got 60 HP investment, um, he is actually able to live this. Um, pretty sure it was a roll if he didn't have any HP investment anyway in his favour, but I think the HP may have guaranteed it at this point. I'm going to switch out because obviously I can see it's not got leftovers, uh, you know, sugar berry, anything like that, so I don't know if he's choice scarfed or not, and I want to keep Electivire because it still really deals with his team quite well. Um, I have Togekiss, you know, built just to deal with this thing. Um, he goes for the Iron Head as long as I don't get flinched. I'll be okay. Uh, I'm pretty sure though, again, like I've bought the Baburi twice this season and I've been critical hitted for him both times. Um, fortunately, I don't get flinched, which is nice, you know, none of that Togekiss own medicine. Does let me click Dazzling Gleam because nothing on this team would appreciate the Dazzling Gleam. Uh, and it does take out the extra drill. Now, obviously, this thing is incredibly weak. He has got the chance to put Stealth Rock still up still. He has got the bronzing around, but I'm deciding I'm going to let this thing go. Um, I could have probably switched into Beedrill. At this point, got the free Mega Evolution up and kept the uh, Tokus. But if he did, you know, get rocks up again before I could bring Tokus in, uh, there's not really much point in doing that. And I've taken unnecessary damage on Beedrill. So now I decide this is a chance to bring in Beedrill. If he's choice, he's choice into Moonblast and really can't hit me. I get a free U turn off. Um, I'm definitely not clicking Poison Jab. While I've taken out one of his Steel types, he has still got Bronzong around. I know for a fact that Adamant U turn, even to like a defensive fit, uh, Bronzong. It's going to do about 50% minimum, if not more, if he's especially defensive. Um, he has sent me his team, but I can't remember what kind of build it was. So I'm going to look at U-Turn, and I'm pretty sure U-Turn might have had a chance of killing Whimsicott anyway. Um, and that does a whole load of damage. So I'm going to bring in Infernape, and he really hasn't got a switch in. Um, obviously, Manaphy is something, but Win uh, sorry, Winston, Infernape is one of my Z-Move users. I could easily be carrying a Z-Move to deal with the, um, the Manaphy at this point. He'll see that I'm not Life Orb or Leftovers or anything like that, so I could have potentially be a Choice item or, again, like I said, Z Crystal. Um, so he does actually bring in the Manaphy now. Now, I'm, obviously, I don't think there's any kind of move I could do at that current stage where I could kill Manaphy, even if I was Z moving. So I'm going to switch back into my um, into my Electivire. He does click Scald this time. He's got no reason to click Ice Beam anymore. And he doesn't get the burn, unfortunately. So I'm going to click Wild Charge because... I want that thing as weak as possible. Um, the Kyrie switch was quite obvious, but I wasn't entirely sure if he'd make it after I'd predicted him beforehand with the extra drill. Um, so I go for the wild charge, and it doesn't do too much. It does a decent chunk. I have got rock slide in this thing because I was fully expecting the Volcarona to come. Um, and wanting to hit that. Again, another reason why I had Assault Vest in this thing. But he has leftovers, and immediately so soon that I'm like, okay, I know for a fact that he is going to have substitute. Um, and I am now absolutely terrified by this thing, so I'm going to have to let some things die to it if I just want to get like get it dead as soon as possible. Because I'm going to have to try and U-turn around, break its sub, sack something off, and then bring something in to kill it. So it's really forcing my hand this set, and I was really, really terrified at this point. Um, I am going to go for Rock Slide again, and I actually miss, and at this point I'm like, oh no, this, this really hasn't played into my hands. Now it actually turns out Ice Beam is his only offensive move on this thing, and the roll was, I think, literally 50-50 is what Jordan said. And I live. Um, so obviously the 50 50 has gone in my favour. So it was quite a bad play that last round. I shouldn't have clicked Rock Slide. I should have clicked Earthquake. Earthquake from this uh, Electivire set will actually break a max HP Kyrim's sub. Um, so I should have clicked that. 
um, because I would have definitely broken this up. Luckily, I hit the rock slide, so I should have clicked earthquake again that turn, but I clicked rock slide. That's fine. I, I hit, so it doesn't really matter in the end, but, in, you know, it's a learning sort of experience for me. Knowing Earthquake would have broken this thing sub, I should have definitely click that because I wouldn't have run the risk of missing. So I do get this thing out from being behind the sub, which is fantastic because now I can bring in B Drill, click Poison Jab, and everything on this team either dies to one Poison Jab or two Poison Jabs. So there's literally no reason for me I am uh, to not do it. I'm very much thinking still that Manaphy is scarfed. I haven't mentioned it yet, but we haven't seen an item on it. Um, I click Poison Jab, and this is an offensive Sylveon, but I even think a max defense Sylveon would have died here. Um, and obviously, if he was any kind of berry set, I would have killed him with a poison jab, so that's fine. In comes a Manaphy, and in this, you know, I'm thinking at this point it's Scarf, because you haven't seen an item. Turns out he actually was no item. He was meant to be Wakan Berry, um, but it wasn't on there. Um, I'm going to bring in Necrozma, because one, Necrozma doesn't really do anything for me this game, other than help take on Whimsicott a bit better. Uh, and two, it was kind of bought anyway to beat Manaphy. Um, although, I did kind of overlook slightly... Uh, in building how Psyshock wouldn't have broken the sub on this thing. So I see Rain Dance. At this point, I'm thinking he's probably not going to have sub. He'll have rest as his last move because we've seen Rain Dance, Scald, Ice Beam. So actually, in, in fairness, I could have probably bought um, could have bought myself a Gastrodon and walled this thing one-on-one, -on -one, but I was definitely expecting Energy Ball. So Rain Dance is really annoying uh, for two reasons. One, it gives him uh, pretty much reliable recovery now with rest if he does have it. And two, Moonlight isn't actually going to be doing uh, recovering much help for me. Obviously, Scald is boosted by the rain, so if I click Moonlight now, I pretty much gain back what I uh, lost from Scald. Clicking Psyshock there, it does look like I'm doing a decent amount of damage, but watching the uh, recording for Jordan, when I recorded it for him, I could see it, that Psyshock, I don't think, once did more than 25%, so this is kind of why I was terrified of uh, this thing having a substitute. He does get a crit burn, so I'm really not getting too lucky with my um, crits this game uh, and he does burn me but hey I'll happily take the burn on this over my uh, Electivire uh, so I do get burnt and scalded I'm just kind of leaving the Cosmo to die at this point because it's looking like Kartana can just clean up at this point um, I still get Infernape as well and because this thing isn't scarfed it's pretty much able to take this thing on um, I say take this thing on I need to try and get it down to at least half health uh, to, to the point where Thunder Punch has a chance of killing, so. Um, obviously, Hydration goes off, Manaphy is awake. And it's now looking to be uh, my way in with Kartana. Like I said before, um, all he's got to do here is click Scald, kill me off. I'm absolutely fine with that. I want the Crossman to die at this point. Um, he does go for the Scald, and it does kill me off. Obviously, the rain is up. At this point, I was also thinking he might potentially be Damp Rock, um, but I see the rain stops here after five turns, so... I know he's not damp rock, so I'm still thinking these these Zima views are potentially. Um, I also had the thought that he might be the grass berry, but even then, if I got a leaf blade off and weakened it to the point where Thunder Punch killed, I pretty much cleaned up Infernape and B Drill anyway, so it's fine. Um, so he does actually bring a Kyrim. Um, he didn't really have any switch ins at this point. Uh, I'm pretty sure two leaf blades would have had a chance of killing his Whimsicott set, and the. Um, Kyrim dies to anything after rocks anyway, and obviously the Manaphy won't take a Leaf Blade. So, um, at this point, I am Choice Scarfed. He brings in Whimsicott, his only real chance. Um, if it's max HP, this is a guaranteed 2 hit KO. If he's max defense, uh, I don't know the calc, but I'm pretty sure it probably wouldn't be a 2 hit KO. Um, he does actually have the Switcheroo, though. Um, definite thumbnail material right there. Um, he gives me a Choice Specs and takes my Scarf, so... Would have been very problematic if he was Choice Scarf Manaphy. Um, well, I say very problematic. Could have been a problem. Um, but we can see here that Leaf Blade is quite comfortably going to kill me. Now, I played it risky here. I ha hadn't actually seen if, he'd, if he's uh, got a Hidden Power Fire. Very surprised he doesn't. Um, although Choice Specs Moonblast would have probably nearly been capable of taking me out anyway. So, um, I don't really care too much. Like, because if this thing dies at this point, uh, I have got Infernape and... Uh, Beedrill left to take on this one Manaphy, so I think I would have won that one um, or two on one anyway. Um, and I'm a plus two Kartana, um, it locked into Leaf Blade. Uh, this Manaphy's got no chance. So we do take the free win uh, again, reminiscent of my game against Paul in the uh, sort of in the fact that Kartana's just bought in late game and cleans up. It's what Kartana does, and I am very much falling in love with this Pokemon. Um, 
people, you know, say it's bad because its move pool's shallow, but it, it doesn't matter. It's got like six or seven moves that you can pick from, which pretty much normally cover the other opponent's sort of, you know, weaknesses and, um, you know, it, it breaks walls with Stab Leaf Blade. So I am slowly loving this thing. Uh, uh, slowly, I'm quickly falling in love with this thing. Uh, but like I said, good game, Jordan. Um, so glad I didn't see the Volcarona. Like I said, was very scared of Flame Body. Um, very glad I didn't see the Sableye as well, because looking at his team, obviously he has got the Whimsicott and the Sylveon um, to switch into fighting moves, but I would have a Fire, I mean Flare Blitz or Gunk Shot would destroy both of them. Um, so Infernape, you know, I, mean, I didn't have Gunk Shot as it turns out, but Infernape against this team was looking incredibly good. I mean, it only hit the field once anyway, and that was to kill Bronzong. Um, but, you know, just looking back at my draft, Kartana, Beedrill, and Infernape all just kind of ruin his draft. And when you only have eight things on the draft, it's so easy to prepare for the individual things. Um, I think that's why my team was matching up quite well this game against Jordan. Um, he literally had zero switch-ins to Beedrill, um, other than the um, Volcarona, which I was so happy not to see. Um, because I don't have any rock types, I don't have any water types outside Gastrodon, which cannot beat Volcarona because Giga Drain is a thing. Um, so I was very, very scared, and I didn't really have many ways to deal with it. I could have obviously bought a rock type attack on Necrozma for it, but again, the coverage, I mean, me bringing a rock move on that would have meant pretty much that Bronzong could switch in, um, Excadrill could switch in. And they weren't ones that I wanted to come in for free because they could both set up rocks, they could both spin, they can extra can do damage. So, yeah. Um, I think I'm pretty much just rounding at this point, but I mean, what I'm trying to say is my offensive matchup against his whole team in general was so good. I was quite confident going into this game, and it played out quite well for me in the end. Um, I think mainly because Volcarona wasn't there. But like Jordan said, and I can agree with him, literally anything on his draft could have come to this game. So, good game, Jordan. Uh, make sure you go check out his side of the battle. Uh, when he uploads it, he's had computer issues, so he is a bit behind. Uh, but make sure you go and check him out. I'll leave links to his channel and Twitter below. Thank you for watching this video, guys. If you did enjoy, make sure you leave a like. Um, obviously, that means a lot to me. Leave a comment on how you thought the battle went. And I'll see you next week for week seven. Bye.